two. We're live? We're live. we're live. Are we live? We are live. <laughs> Hola, Unconventionals. Happy Saturday. Good to see all of you. Well, virtually. virtually. And I guess really we're just chatting because <laughs> I can't see you. Hopefully you can see us. Yeah, well, hopefully you can't hear all of the loud music being played outside our place right now. Yeah, there's a big party going on that we did not know about. Otherwise, we probably would have postponed this. So fingers crossed, it does not become disruptive. It's never a dull moment here. Yeah, <laughs> audio is something we've struggled with since we started YouTube, and we are still struggling with audio. <laughs> yes, it's just life. Life likes to throw those curveballs at you. What are you going to do? Okay, yeah, it's like it quieted down. They were supposed to be... It's Oh my gosh, we were freaking out about 30, 45 minutes ago because it was ridiculously loud. Yeah, they had a band, a live band for the World Cup halftime. They're having a watch party, I guess. So we may hear some screaming if somebody scores. Is the game still going on? It's, uh, is it over finally? I don't know. Oh yeah, over. Oh yeah, it's over. France, oh, France won. France won. Happy won. Whoops, happy. One. No, that's not Whoops, JP. All right, JP's messing around with stuff, you guys. <laughs> a little audio feedback there. <laughs> so speaking of audio, Stone Street. Constantly audio <laughs> issues. Thank you, Master of None. Thank you, love Master of None, by yeah. the way. Yeah, anyway, music, music, roosters, dogs, children screaming. Always, always a fun time. Yes. <clears throat> Fireworks. But... It's all good. Yep. Before I forget, we wanted to remind you guys that we are getting ready to launch our new online income e-course. And it's right now you can pre-order it and you get a 50% discount. We're going to launch it yep. on January 2nd. We're almost done recording the videos. Yes. We're about three-fourths of the way on the videos. All the content is written. So I just have to talk to Amelia about what's in it. And then we sit down and, and record it. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun to walk down memory lane on some of that too, since we've been working online for quite a while now. Yeah. Both of us. Yeah. Yeah, I was work I've worked online since the 90s for most of my career, even before it was popular. So yeah, Amelia has too. She's yeah. worked remotely for a company. I've worked by on my right. own. Yeah, I wasn't true a true strictly digital worker, but been working out of the house for a long time. Yeah. And I like it. So I think we can talk about our topic. We I were going to so. wait and see if there was too much noise. So I think it's okay. It's yeah, I think so. It's a little, it's a little loud, but I don't think if nobody can hear it, I think we're good to go. We just can't have copyrighted music in our videos on YouTube or we get, we get in a, trouble. We get a strike or a ding or, or basically they don't approve of that. No. So today we're going to talk about the 26 side hustles that will make you money in 2023, at least according to the people who do them every day. And this came from an article on Next Advisor, which is uh, part of Time Magazine. Yeah, I found this when I was scrolling in my newsfeed and I started looking at it and I thought this would be really fun to share with you guys and get your opinions on because some of them are things that I had never even heard of and I didn't know people actually did and I don't know if I would do them. So we want you to tell us, we want you guys to weigh in. Yeah. Thumbs up or thumbs down when yes. we talk about these Yeah, and let us know what you guys think. If you would do it or if you think it's a good idea, Yes, then give it a thumbs up. If you think it's a terrible idea and you would never do it, then give it a thumbs down. Um. Because we're, this is a big thing now. We're reading a lot about how people are really struggling the, with, you know, their jobs going away, being laid off. And so doing side hustles or working for yourself online or doing some of these things that we're going to talk about today is a good way to make additional money. Yeah. Cool. And they're not all related to online work. So some of them you can do wherever you are, like yeah. at your home. Or you have to do them right. at your home. Yes. You can't do them remotely from Ecuador. So the first one, number one is... Rent out your car. Yeah. Okay. So this is what made me intrigued because I read this rent out your car and I'm like, who would rent out their car? So the way they described it is that if you have a car that you're not using, you could rent out. There's a site called Turo, I think it is. Yeah. Turo, T-U-R-O. And apparently you can make extra money renting out your personal vehicle. And personally, I would not do that. I can't imagine how that works with insurance, but I guess I didn't actually click the link to see how it works. I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard of that. Let us know in the comments, but 
Would you consider renting out your car to make some cash? Yes or no? JP, what do you think? I said no. I would not. I'm very, <laughs> very particular about my cars yeah. when I owned one. And I would not want any. I would never let anyone drive it, not even my friends. I wouldn't let anyone drive it, let alone a complete stranger. I mean, I can only imagine how you get that back. Yeah, I don't know. Well, Some of those smells you can't get out. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking a big, big thumbs down on that one. I. Oh, God, it just got really loud for a second. I think that this is a big thumbs down from all of you. I think we're all in agreement on this, that this seems like a really perplexing idea, a bad idea. Yeah, I don't know. I guess if you didn't care if you had an older car and used car and didn't really care, maybe that would work. I'm I guessing Turo probably provides car insurance. But... Yes, yes. Okay, number two is become an online coach. And this, a lot of people do this. So mm -hmm. this is a really good option because you can do it from anywhere, especially if you have a specific skill set. So I would give this one a thumbs up. Yeah, me too. That's kind of what we do. We help, we kind of coach people into moving abroad and you can do it for all kinds of stuff. You can do life coaching, business coaching, speaker coaching, like coaching for how to do better YouTube videos. Yeah. I mean, there's the, really the sky's the limit. If you have an expertise and you're good at giving advice to people, I think that this is a, a good one. And you can literally do it from anywhere with an internet connection. That's what we, we really like jobs that free you from a location from the anchor of a location so that you can take your job and your income with you and go someplace else that may be better or cheaper. Exactly. So oh, no, the live singers yeah, are back. Uh -huh. Yeah. So can you guys, can you guys hear us or hear the music? Cause it's really loud. Yeah. They brought back the live band now that the game is over. Oh, <laughs> I know it's like karaoke. You heard us talk about karaoke before only this is. Okay. All right. Well, we're still hearing that we can. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. We have a directional mic on here, so we, we're hoping it wouldn't sure. be picked up, especially <laughs> if we don't stop talking. If we don't if yes. we stop talking, it might get picked up. Maybe we should start dancing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Number three is build a passive income with real estate. I'm assuming that means renting, like buying a property and renting, renting that out. A lot of people do that. And a lot of people do that and live remotely. They don't even live near their places. So it is a nice kind of income stream that you doesn't require you to remain where you are physically. Yeah, this one, the article says you could buy individual properties or join a group that invests in real estate. Yeah, there so, are investment groups that do real estate and you share yeah. in the profits. Yep. There's another, there's one online you can do now called Arrived Homes. Arrived, like I've arrived. Oh, I have and you can that. buy fractional shares in individual properties. So this has been a popular and a good option for a long time. I see some thumbs up. I would give this a thumbs up if I had the money. Yeah, that's the one downside of this one is it does require a capital investment. And if you're already struggling to make ends meet, you might not have a bunch of money laying around to start this side hustle. Exactly. I like the idea of doing shares as opposed to just owning one extra place outright and then renting it out because that comes with this whole other set of hassles, yeah. like being a landlord. Yeah. being a That landlord, does not sound like fun to me. It's not. Being a renter isn't that much fun sometimes. Some, no, it's not. <laughs> All right. Number four, I guess that's a, I guess I'm going to give that a, th a sideways, a sideways? Thumb. Okay. It's kind of good and bad. There's good and bad to that one. Yes. And it wouldn't work for everyone. Number four is offer in-person services. Um, what does that mean exactly? Well, Amelia? this could be like being like a fitness coach oh. or teaching somebody how to play guitar or swim or I don't know, um, doing somebody's taxes. I was just thinking about taxes the other day, which is why taxes are on my line. There's so many in-person services that you could do that to make money on the side. Yeah, one of our neighbors, after I got done swimming today, one of our neighbors stopped me by the pool and asked if I taught swimming lessons. They want their, I guess, to teach their kid how to swim. I said, nope, sorry, I don't teach. But I did send her some information on, on how to learn how to swim and what kind of a routine I do. You could teach language. A lot of people mm -hmm. teach language and some people really want those in person. So I would say this is a thumbs up viable option for sure. Yeah. I agree. I think personal services are really good because okay. you can do anything. Absolutely. Number five. I don't know, Amelia. What do you think about this one? <laughs> Start a YouTube channel. <laughs> well, obviously, we're going to give that a thumbs up because we do it. 
It is not easy though. I'm going to give this one a sideways <laughs> thumb because it took us a year before we made any money at YouTubing. And we, I was watching some of our old videos. I was looking for old footage to include in a new video we're working on. And it's just so horrible. I was so bad at videography back then. We weren't good on camera. It was horrible. It's painful to watch those first videos. And uh, we didn't make any money. We, wouldn't, we didn't make any money. So if you want to start a side hustle where you actually can make money kind of quickly, YouTube is not it. There's, It's hard to make any kind of money from ad revenue. You need lots of views to get money from ad revenue. And it's not easy to do that. Um, I think the last time I saw the stats were that only 3% of YouTube channels have more than 10,000 subscribers, 3%. So 97% of YouTube channels have lower, less than 10,000 subscribers. So it is, it's just, it's not an easy business. It is very rewarding. It is. It's a lot of fun. Yes. We really love doing it, but man, we had to be really committed to, and stick with it before we started generating any kind of income from it. But also we didn't know what we we're doing. If you have already had the skills, you could hit the ground running and probably do a lot better than we did in the beginning. And John Turner, thanks for joining us again. And thank you so much. Thanks, Super John. Super chat or super sticker. The, the, the uh, flying pair. Yeah, what do they call those? Uh, super stickers, right? Yeah. Yeah, the flying pair. Anyway. That's what we all feel like after the holiday season. <laughs> 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 that is the truth. Okay. Number seven is, oh no, sorry. I skipped one. Number, Number six. six, monetize your property on Airbnb. So this kind of goes along with the rental stuff. A lot of people are doing this and we know quite a few people that have bought property that they intend to use it in their retirement here in Ecuador. And they are currently renting them out on Airbnb. I mean, this is personally not something I would choose to do, but for a lot of people, this is a great choice. So I'm really curious to hear what you guys think on your end. Would you, if you had, if you're thinking about moving or you have a, another property, would you want to rent it out on Airbnb? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Yeah, I'm going to give this another sideways thumb, I think, because it, you have to actually own property in order to rent it out. And here in Latin America, there are actually companies, local service providers that are managing Airbnbs. They have a whole block of them. And they act like a property manager specifically for Airbnbs. And it's a cottage industry that has popped up around that. So seriously, you guys cannot hear this music. I can barely hear myself I know. think. I know. A lot uh, of people are. Okay. So you guys have given this a thumbs up. That's awesome. A lot of people are doing this. Yeah. Very cool. I think I like it. It's the only downside is you actually have to own property that you don't live in. However, I will say as a Airbnb frequenter, we, we'd like to say thank you because yeah. <laughs> we use Airbnb a lot. We really like having a kitchen. Yeah, it's nice to be able to cook our breakfast and dinner. We usually eat lunch out, but it is, it's nice. It is. Next, That's number seven is sell a product online or products. This one, this could be tricky because I think it depends on the type of product. I mean, a lot of people do this, right? Cause they do Etsy and um, what's that other one, JP? Fulfillment by Amazon, FBA. Yeah. There's all kinds of- There's all sorts of stuff. Yeah. But this is something I don't know too much about. So I personally would not choose to do this because I think it might be hard um, to source things to make sure you have enough product or you don't have too much product. Well, that's I the beauty know. of drop shipping though. That's the, the, this business model only really works if you drop ship meaning that you contract with a supplier who kind of manages the order process and your main role is doing the um, promotion of it. So you promote the products, the drop shipper takes care of all of the back office stuff like shipping and returns. Um, but the downside to this is that you really need to have an audience or build an audience in order to sell because there's so much competition, you have to be able to differentiate yourself and get in front of eyeballs and if you don't have an audience already built, then that's going to be a little bit more difficult. So, so yeah, I don't know. We had a friend who did this. He did fulfillment by Amazon and I don't know if he's still doing it, but he was very successful. So you can mm -hmm. definitely do make some extra money or turn it into your full-time business. He did that. And he also did coaching. Yeah. So he did 
took has yeah. a couple of these side hustles. So he also went out and bought, he went around to all the discount shops in the area when we lived in Denver and like Sam's Club, Costco and big lots and all kinds of shops like that. And he bought stuff that was clearanced or, or discontinued at really cheap and then would sell it online. Mm -hmm. um, but he shipped all of that stuff to the Amazon Fulfillment Center and they handled all of the shipping and labeling and everything for him. So his his job was to go shop and find the stuff and then package it up and send it off to the Amazon warehouse. So it seemed to work for him. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Jean Le Francois. Congratulations if you're from France or from France. Yes. Or French Canadian and you uh, like and World Cup soccer. Yes, you're supporting France. I've been looking for a special door, but the company orders them from Portugal. So may I order myself from Spain? I may be going to pay fees when enter Ecuador. A special door. I'm not sure what that means. You mean like in a, a actual like open and closing door? Wow. I bet you it's gorgeous. But yeah, you, you're definitely going to have to pay some import fees. Maybe. Depends on how much it is and how you get it here. Well, like, okay. You know what? You're right. I shouldn't say definitely because if you're bringing it in a container with other stuff, then probably not. Yeah. Good luck. That sounds a bit tricky. Okay. Number eight is do freelance work. And this is a really good one. Yes. Because you can do up. it from anywhere. <laughs> and there's like, there's so many different things that you can do. We cover this in our e-course. In fact, I'm going to put that up here again. We cover this. We go into detail on different freelance type jobs you can do in our e-course and the best ones that where you can actually earn money quickly and over time consistently over time so um i'm going to give that a big thumbs up me too freelancing is such a great option love it number nine is launch a paid newsletter or subscription this one i don't know it seems i mean i know we have a newsletter but I don't know. JP handles it. Like we told you guys before I do the research, I don't know enough about actually managing a blog or writing a newsletter to know if it would make money. I personally would not choose to do, do this. If I had to do the writing, you guys would get like two sentences because <laughs> yeah. I don't like to write. So for me, this is a thumbs down, which is funny since we have a newsletter. <laughs> well, it says or subscription oh, or subscription. We have Patreon. Oh, OK. Oh, uh, does. <laughs> I know I was waiting for her to stop talking so I could pull the foot out of her mouth. But she wouldn't stop. <laughs> I was just thinking the the writing aspect. <laughs> yeah. So I, mean, I would say that this is another one where you need to have an audience and it takes a while to build one. So I'm not sure exactly how they're expecting you to make money at this, at least not quickly. I think it's a great thing to do in for a long-term commitment. Yes. Yeah. Cause our, we really enjoy our newsletter. We don't make, you know, we don't have any affiliates or anything on there, but it, we like to share that information. And I like it because I am checking the news every day, but obviously I wasn't thinking about Patreon JP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, now you guys know that this was not rehearsed. We did not review any of this beforehand. No, I didn't even look at this list before we sat down. I kind of had an idea what was on it just because I look at this stuff a lot. But Oh, that was awesome. And now we have, we're listening to Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, right? I love uh, rock I think and roll. So. It's kind of hard to tell because we're talking. Yeah. I'm trying not to pay attention. It's okay, just, where yeah. are we? We got to just keep plowing through. Number 10 is promote other brands and take a commission. This is what I would call an affiliate yes. program. And a lot of people do affiliate marketing and they do well with it. Yeah. Affiliate marketing is really popular. Again, you need an audience though, because if you're going to do affiliates, that means you need eyeballs and traffic to your website or your videos. So you can't just like create a landing page. Although some people do, they're really good at landing pages. Mm -hmm. They create a landing page. They buy Google ads. And if it's a high ticket item or if it's a recurring revenue stream, meaning you get an affiliate commission every single month that a, a user signs up and you get paid every month. And those are pretty good and you can afford to buy ads for those. However, it's competitive market and it helps a lot if you already have an audience. Yep. Well, we're getting a couple thumbs up, but lots of thumbs down. Yeah, it's a different animal, but it can definitely be successful. And if you're one of those types of people that likes to go out and maybe take a few key things and promote it. That could be perfect side hustle for you. Okay. Uh, number 11 is lease out garages or yard space for storage. Yes. <laughs> so go ahead. I was going to say this would be, you could definitely do this here in Ecuador because 
storage is a premium. There are not the self-storage facilities here in Ecuador like we're used to in the United States. What I was going to say is if you have a garage or a basement in the United States and it's not full already, congratulations. <laughs> yes, we're very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> because most people have their, their storage already packed full of their own stuff. Yeah. But I guess you could get rid of that. That's another way to make money, sell all your junk and then and rent the space out that it used to occupy. That's probably in here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Number 12. I'm going to give that one a thumbs up if you have the, have the space. Yeah. If you could figure out a way to do it where it wouldn't be obtrusive to your lifestyle either. And you would need to have somebody said something about risk manage Boulder Geek risk management. I agree. You would have to make sure you have good liability insurance for that. Yeah. So number 12 is learn a new trade skill. How is that a side hustle, learning a well, new skill? Well, let's see what they say. Let me I, I, would, I guess that would be like learning how to do electric, be an electrician or a plumber or a car repair. Yeah, learn to repair appliances as a side oh, gig. Appliances? Yeah, why not? That's well, a good idea. Thanks, Wendy and Ted. Hey, so good to see you guys. Bienvenidos. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, so this says you can, there's Nana Academy, which is a free online appliance repair training school. So you could get trained for free and go out there and use your skills. I like that idea. Yeah, that's cool. This person says they've made $190,000 by taking jobs on Nana. Uh, that's a really good side hustle. Yeah, uh, it's getting loud. I know, I know. <laughs> that's one thing you can count on in Ecuador is there is going to be there are going to be random parties at random times of the day and night and you don't even know why they're partying. Yeah, this is this is like, like heavy metal 80s now. OK. Oh, this is Nirvana. It is. It's, I'm glad you guys can't hear it. Yeah, I'm surprised. It's so loud. It's really kind of hard to say. <laughs> I know it is It's really distracting. So the downside to number 12 is you can't take that on the road with you. If you learn how to repair appliances and you come to Ecuador, you're going to be shocked at how little they pay. Like we we had a guy come re fix our refrigerator in a loan and the parts and labor included was like $10, wasn't it? It yeah. was like ten or it was ten, ten or twenty dollars, including the parts. Yes. Yeah, I just in the U.S. it's not even worth your time to drive there for twenty dollars, including the part. So you're that's not a really good job to take overseas or abroad. But it would be if you're planning on staying put and just want to do stuff on the side. Absolutely. All right. So number thirteen, I like this one: tutor college and high school students. Yeah, there's a website called tutor.com. There's another one I can't remember the name of right now that where you can sign up and tutor kids in English, science, math, language. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. To, yeah. You can teach English to kids in other countries. This is getting the thumbs up, and I agree. I'm giving this one a thumbs up. Yeah. I think it's a really good option. Boulder Geek, I like your comment about it called punchies. That's a really good way to put it. The music, punchies. I know, it felt... It, Earlier, it was techno music, which I thought was kind of weird considering we're around the holidays, but that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. WC said, did you tip them for the repairs? It was actually paid for by our landlord, wasn't it? It was, yeah. So um, did, did, we had something done in Cuenca. The plumber came to fix the toilet. Yeah. But I that was covered by the landlord, too. Oh, well, we actually, we paid for it, and I think he reimbursed us or we took it out of our rent. I don't remember. That was yeah, a long time ago. We haven't had anything we've done in a while. Yes. But computer, some uh, California karma said they do computer repairs. That's a good idea. There's a skill that would take you anywhere. Here we are now. <laughs> Entertain us. <laughs> okay. I need my long hair. This is our craziest live stream yet. Okay. So number 14 is sublet your non-real estate assets. What does that mean? I don't non -real know. Real estate. Does that does mean? Does anybody like, know what this means? What was it? Number number fourteen. It says, "Oh, rent out your swimming pool." <laughs> yeah, you're gonna rent out your swimming pool. I don't think so. Uh, or um, your RV. Yeah, an RV. Okay, that's actually... parking spaces. You could rent out your parking space if you have one. I guess you'd have to make sure that you're following the laws with that one, especially swimming pools, man. That could get you into a lot of trouble. Yeah. And boats, <laughs> your boats. I, that's another, God, that seems like a lot of liability to me to be renting out boats and garages, parking spaces, yeah. RVs. I don't know. I'm going to give that one a huge yeah, thumbs I'm gonna down. Yeah, I'm going to give that a thumbs down. That seems too risky to me. Yeah. Yeah. No Especially way. no to the swimming pool. 
resell clothing that's already in your closet. Big thumbs up. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Chance says, I beat him. Exactly. That was exactly <laughs> the first thought I had is I don't want to be swimming in stranger pee. Gross. <laughs> Okay, that's not what I thought of. <laughs> but yeah, that gives a th gets a thumb down. Now the resale clothing, if you have if your clothing is in good condition, I say absolutely resell your clothes. I have bought used clothing. I am a big fan of all of that. So but would you do it in a consignment? Because you don't really make much money at that. Would you sell it on your own or online? How would you do that? I know there's websites where you can sell um clothes like used clothes. There's um, also those uh, clothing swaps, but yeah, that doesn't make there's, side income. There's certain there's a variety of ways you can do it. And again, not all of these have to make, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Some of these is just to make some extra cash. Yeah, side hustles. Yeah, we're, exactly. Philip, side hustle. Philip, we're talking about 26 top side hustles for next year. <laughs> <laughs> and we're giving them a thumbs up if they're a good idea and a thumbs down if they're a bad idea. And I actually invented a new one, a th sideways thumb, if I think that they're kind of. Which I think somebody else did this. So, yeah, whoever did that earlier, you were spot on. Number 16 is start a volume photography business. I had to look and see what this one was, too, because I'm not familiar with the term volume photography. And so according to this, they mean like go and do um big group pictures so taking school kid pictures what do they say yearbook pictures or event photos for a school district that seems like that would not be a very easy thing to break into i thought maybe they were talking about wedding photography or something like that but um it says here there's a website called photo day that will help photographers with sales marketing and overall workflow so maybe they have leads for you so i don't know I, personally, I wouldn't, I'm not a photographer, so nobody would want to see any of my photos. You would get from here down because I'm terrible. So for me, I would give that a thumbs down. All right. So they are also, they split out the other photography one, right? Isn't there another one on here about photography? I didn't see one, but I don't know. You're jumping ahead. No, there's ahead, not. Jamie. There's not. So I would say that under the photography is you could sell your stock photos online like Shutterstock or some of those um, iStock photo, you can sell your photography on those stock photo websites. I would yeah. say that. And you can also do that from everywhere. I have heard it's difficult to make good money at it. But if you're a really good photographer or a videographer, because you could do stock video as well. And 4K is in high demand because most of the stock uh, videography was done in 1080p and more and more people are using it for 4K videos. So there's a lot of demand for 4k especially drone footage if you are good with the drone so i would say that i'm gonna give that one a thumbs up for a variety of things if you're good at photography and videography yeah i said no but i'm just thinking about would i personally do it and for me that's a no yeah i would i would i know you would but you also do our videography <laughs> and photography that's true. <laughs> so it's kind of a no-brainer for you jp Okay, um, number 17, I'm just going to, it's a big, big no, big but no. But look what you're doing. You just said big no. Big no. <laughs> big no. Okay, wash, number 17 is to wash other people's clothes. No, thank you. Yeah, I love to do laundry, but I don't really want to do strangers laundry. So I would also give this one a thumbs down. However, that is definitely in demand in countries like Ecuador. So you could come here and wash people's clothes, but... I don't know how much money you would actually make doing that. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of people feel the same way we do. JP. Yeah. You guys are all giving it a gross and thumbs down. Well, and here in Ecuador, it's so cheap to have other people do your laundry too. It's like two or $3 a load and that's washed, dried and folded. So it's not a very lucrative business here. I would say Dave B has a really good idea. Do a tasteful only fans and you sell the clothes off your back. I think that's a great idea. Oh, there you go. I did, yeah, but let us know what you guys think for your side hustles. Why not? <laughs> okay, number 18 is to start an independent moving company. This seems like an awful lot of work. Um, however, we get people asking us if we know movers here in Ecuador. So I guess if you have a truck and you can get some people, then maybe that would work for you. But personally, for me, I'm going to say no. Yeah, I'm going to say no to that one too. Because of my bad back. But yeah. Also, there's so many two men in a truck type businesses out there. Yes. I think it would be hard to kind of distinguish yourself and compete. Plus, you're going to 
it's hard work. It's hot. You always have to do it when it's raining or snowing. <laughs> as yes. soon as you pull up, the clouds just come in and dump on you. I don't yes. know. I would not want to do that one. That one seems like a lot of work. I'm not sure how you would do that as a side hustle either, because the point of this is to do it while you still have your job. And how are you going to do that if you're if you have a client that is moving in the middle of a Wednesday and you're supposed to be at work, how's that going to work? So we've got, you guys are giving us a, some fun ideas. I think you're right about training people on how to use new technology. That is training people again is excellent. Oh, and Lewis, thank you. Boulder geek. Um, your comment is hilarious. Great way to have your household stuff end up unsold on the Molly Cone and why Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole different type of business. Okay, where were we? Yeah, these are not, uh, Philip asked, any of these are passive income. We got this from an article on Next Advisor, which is part of Time Magazine, and none of these are passive. I wouldn't call any of these truly passive. No. A couple of them kind of, like YouTube kind of is, I call it pseudo passive income because you got to continue putting out new videos to to keep your ad revenue alive. So it's not totally passive, like for st selling your stock photography, you need to continue to replenish and add new stuff. So once okay. you post it, it's passive, but then it, you, if you don't post any stuff, then you've stopped making more money. I guess if you did long, if you rented out your property long-term, that would be passive, yeah. Yeah. So there are some on here. We just thought this was a, a fun, quirky list, which is why we wanted to share it with you. It's so quiet now. Yeah. So here's one. And taking a moment to enjoy the silence. <laughs> Number 19 is help others with odd jobs on TaskRabbit. Yeah, somebody said, somebody made a comment about being a handyman. So that's kind of handyman. Yeah. There's a handyman or women, handy people are always in demand. So I'm going to give that a thumbs up if you can do it. I'm going to give it a thumbs up, except that, again, you're tied to the U.S. or wherever TaskRabbit is available. I don't think it's totally international yet. And it might be hard for you to get a task in a foreign country unless you're fluent in the language. But if you came to Ecuador and you were able to help out some of the expats who don't speak Spanish, that's another way to get around that. But you just understand you're not going to make as much money. Yes. And some people just like to tinker. So if you're one of those people who just likes to work and repair and fix stuff, that might be right up your alley. Num um, number, number 20. Number 20, offer predetermined services on Fiverr. Well, we're definitely in big support of Fiverr because there's we talk about Fiverr. That goes back to the whole freelancer thing where you could buy gigs and have people do writing for you or help you with your resume or all sorts. You could do all sorts of stuff on Fiverr. Tons of different yeah. stuff on Fiverr. So I'm going to give that one a thumbs up too. Yeah, me too. There's like hundreds, probably thousands of different types, categories on Fiverr yeah. for you to do it really, you can tailor it to your skill set and what you enjoy doing. Absolutely. Yeah, you can even do like, you can write business plans or create like travel itineraries. There's so many different things that you can do. Yep. Yep. So let's see what's next. 21, turn your backyard into an on-demand dog park. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I <I'm> <laughs> I love dogs, but I would not want to pick up after a big a bunch of dogs came in and used my backyard. I was thinking how much fun that would be, but you have to make sure you live in an area where you can get away with that without getting into trouble by your neighbors or your homeowners association. So it's an interesting idea. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Yes or no to renting, turning your back? backyard into an on-demand dog park. You could definitely do that in Ecuador. There's so few zoning guidelines here. I, you probably would not have a problem in most places that have a yard. But, and that would be fun actually in here. It would be fun. And Because a lot of people have small dogs. The big dogs are like guard dogs. They are utility animals and they are not treated the same as the little purse dogs, which are really popular here. Oh, Lord said she does. She's a dog walker. Dog walker, that's a great side hustle too. Yeah, Thank we, you. We see a lot of dog walkers here in Ecuador. Yes. On the trails and sidewalks when we go out walking. They have like six or eight or ten dogs. It's so cute. <laughs> Sometimes, like one day we saw it was like a stair step. It had like six dogs and from smallest to largest. It was really cute. Yeah, and you could do that anywhere. So yep. I'm going to give a thumbs up to the dog walking service. Okay. Uh, number 22, offer social media ghost writing services. Sure, why not? 
Yeah, I think that's good. I wouldn't not, do it. <laughs> I don't like to write. Yeah, she's not the writer. Ugh. Not the writer in the group. No. Um, I, what does that mean exactly? Like social media posts or is that blog posting too? Well, is that just writing in general? Let's see what they have. Let's drill down here and see. This says uh, you just help people with their social media presence. So it's like a social media manager. I would say that that's more like a social media manager. But yeah, you can. Oh, yeah. This person helped Twitter with Twitter with tweets and stuff like that. So, yeah. Why yeah, we hire, we hire writers to do blog posts for us. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll give that one a thumbs up. But I do all of our social media posting. I try to get Amelia to help, but she won't. I don't like doing it. She, Sorry, you guys. I don't know. It's not that I don't like to engage because clearly I do, but I don't know what to say. So then I just get an analysis paralysis and then I just don't say anything. And that really defeats the entire purpose of posting on social media. Yep. <laughs> All right, number 23 is sell custom baked goods. Um, do you have to have licenses for that in the United States, like health and safety certificates and stuff? I think you do, don't you? I don't know, but you can definitely do that here in Ecuador. And people do that a lot. And they, I think they, you know, make a pretty decent amount of money. We so, don't know. We don't really you're know. You're right. I don't know. I'm making it, <laughs> I'm assuming that they do because I see the, these people over and over again at the fairs. And they're selling their baked goods. So, yeah, I would give that a thumbs up. I know in the U.S. Boulder Geek that you can rent kitchens, commercial kitchens by the hour, and you can go in and make your stuff and then package it and take it with you to sell, like, if it's prepackaged. But I don't know. I'm going to say this is a no for me. For you? For me, But yeah. we buy the baked goods from other people. I know, but I don't like doing, baking it. But, yeah, we don't want to. Well. And the thought, too, of, like, the liability that you might have if the, if – you get bad ingredients or if something happens and people get sick. I would not, I wouldn't want to deal with that. Well, don't worry. We're not going to. <laughs> Number, I'd rather support other people. There's some really good bakers and salsa makers out there. So thanks to all of you guys. A lot of people said yes to this one though. Awesome. All you bakers out there. <laughs> Typhoid Mary got her start that way. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's funny. All right, number 24, create a niche reviews website. I want to say this is a big thumbs up. You, The downside is you have to commit to it because it's going to take a while for you to get consistent traffic on your website or your blog from doing reviews, especially if you want to tie this in with YouTube or a podcast. I think that would be great. Yeah. I think it's got a huge potential because everybody's always looking for opinions. You need to have good opinions and be able to analyze things and and not regurgitate what other people have already said. You need to have your own insight and yeah. perspective, but, and you got to be willing to stick with it. But I think this is a good one. I'm going to give this one a thumbs up. You guys seem to like it too. Yeah. The nice thing about a reviews website is you can sign up for affiliate programs and review products. And then you get credit every time one of those products sells or a service, you can review services too. So I'm a big, big fan of that one. Yes. Number 25, curate a popular playlist. So this one says that you can make money creating if you have great taste in music. I find this interesting. It says that um, you could use a website like Submit Hub and Playlist Push to review songs from new artists and consider them for playlists. And it says you only you just need to have your playlist has to have a thousand followers. So if that's it, I I think that sounds like fun. Who doesn't like music? Yeah. Thumbs up. Why not? I don't know if you would make a ton of extra money, but again, this is about side hustle. So you get to explore, experience new artists. I like it. Yeah, I think if you enjoy music and would enjoy creating playlists, this might be fun. I don't think you can expect to make a lot of money at it. Yes. Yeah. All right. And wait, we have one more. I thought that was the last one. Purchase and place a vending machine. The tried and true side hustle. I don't know. I read a story about this. Is this the same guy? No, this is a different, different guy. So the, the vending machine. Well, first of all, you can't do that and live abroad because you have to maintain them and continue right. to stock them. So you can make money at this. I think it would be hard to get if there's a spot that would be great for vending machines. Somebody's already got a vending machine in it. So you're going to have to figure out how to get you basically wrestle valuable real estate away from other people who have vending machines or target new businesses. But 
a lot of the times the like companies or buildings have contracts with large vending companies that manage this stuff. I think this would be really hard yeah. to break into. Plus you got the vending machines themselves, I think cost about $5,000. So you're going to have to have some capital up front. You have to have a way to ship it and move it and get it in place. And then you have to buy the products and restock, keep it restocked. I don't like that. This is a big thumbs down for me. Yeah. This is a lot of capital and a lot of work. I'm going to give this one a thumbs down too. It seems kind of dated. Yeah. So it seems like there's a lot of other ways for people to buy snacks. <laughs> yeah. And plus it ties you to a physical location. You yes. have to be able to drive to your vending machines unless you make enough on them to hire that out. And I yes. think unless you want to have a big business with a thousand vending machines, I don't know that you would make enough. I saw, I read an article just a few days ago about a guy that did this it, during, in 2020, I guess he got laid off from a tech job and he bought a $5,000 vending machine and now he owns a bunch of them. And he um, said he makes $30,000 a month in revenue, but revenue is a lot different than profit. And because you have to continually pay to upkeep the vending machines and to restock them. So I'm guessing at least half of that goes to the products, probably more. I just, I don't know. Anyway, it seems like, like, yeah, it's not something I would choose to do, but yeah. it's an interesting idea. I don't know. The list was fun, but you guys have some good ones too, like virtual office assistant, online tutoring for mm -hmm. sure. Medical transcription. We know several people who do that, which is a great one too, because you can do that anywhere. Shopping for the elderly. That is a good idea. Yeah, that's a good one. And then John, I saw your comment. What are the most common or question? What are the most common side hustles for expats and EC? A I would lot? say, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I would say teaching English online is the most popular one that we've seen. And making stuff. A lot of people do the uh, baked goods or make th focus on items, specialty items that you can't get in the United uh, from the United States. So the things that people are used to having from the U.S. or Canada that they can't easily get in Ecuador. Yeah, like barbecue sauce and hot sauce. Yeah. And various things like that. You can't find really good hot sauce in Ecuador for some, yes. they don't like spicy food here. So if you can find a product that appeals to the expat community and you're in a place like Cuenca or Monta with a bunch of expats, then you have a built-in audience to buy that stuff that you can't find in the grocery store. That what like we're, we're used to eating hot, spicy food and we can't <laughs> find it here. Yep. So CBD oil is popular here. That's, I, but I'm not sure how they get their their product to make it. Yeah, I don't know. We haven't really delved into that for a side hustle. What else is? Uh, what else do the expats do? We know a few that do massage. Yep. They just charge a lot less. You're looking at like twenty to thirty five dollars an hour, depending on where you are. So it's not nearly as much as what you were used to getting paid in the U.S. But it's also the cost of living is a lot lower. Well, we know several people who teach yoga, so. Um, there's a lot of, there's a variety of things you could do. Real estate. A lot of people come here and sell real estate, expats. Yep. It helps if you speak Spanish or at least have contacts who are fluent that are like a lawyer who's bilingual. Yep. There's a lot of different things. Yeah. Well, this was a really fun topic, a lot of different than what we normally do, but I have to say I laughed a lot during this one. So <laughs> thanks for indulging us today. Yeah. What do you guys think? Do you think any of these are viable? You think, are you interested in any of them? Let us know if you're planning, thinking about doing or already doing yeah. some of these. I would bet some of you are. There's a wide variety of stuff in here. The one that th still throws me though is renting out your own car. That seems ridiculous to me. Yeah, we're not that. <laughs> so, but we're not done. So don't, don't leave us. Yeah. We, now we start our regular yes. Q and A. Wow. That took 45 minutes. I away. know. That's why I, re I didn't realize we were rambling that long. That's why I said, thanks for sticking with us. Plus it's, it's so weird now that I'm not hearing the music. I'm a little thrown off you guys. Make beer start a cerveceria. It's funny. They just sent out a, oh, a, a nationwide text message and alert. It's like an Amber alert for alcohol. And it said, do not drink alcohol from dubious sources. I thought the funny, it was just funny the way it translated the, uh, the message to dubious sources because yes. they've been having <laughs> issues here with people getting tainted alcohol and getting really sick or even dying from it. Yes. So scary. 
but it definitely got our attention. So I guess if that was their point, yeah. it was effective. Thank you, uh, Dave B. I really appreciate that. Most enjoyable and well-rounded people on YouTube. Oh, thank you so much. That's nice. Now I don't I even know. know what to say. I know. Now we have to keep talking because there's no background music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else are we going to talk about now? I don't yeah, know. We're used to getting questions. Did you guys watch our uh, um, robbed, how we got robbed in Mexico or the, the uh, Mexico Ecuador comparison? We got so many questions if we were moving to Mexico that we thought we'd just answer it in a video. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, it's, um, somebody said that we should just burn in a, a note <laughs> in, the, in our videos from now on that says, we are not moving to Mexico. I know. It's so funny. Uh, so I guess we're going to have more of these when we go to other countries. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Or maybe people will get more used to us traveling. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. The crime is worse in Ecuador, but it's worse everywhere. Yeah. I mean, I, if you look at the news out of Mexico, it's horrible. And people are like, oh, Ecuador is too dangerous. I'm going to Mexico. Well, Mexico is a lot more dangerous than Ecuador and has been for a long time. But there are it's not the whole country. That's the thing. It's like there are dangerous parts most of the time. It's not where expats go unless it's a tourist area. Right. And then you're, you're talking mostly pickpocketing. Right. Like what happened to us in Mexico. It's not like we felt very safe in Ajijic and, and in Guadalajara and Colonia Americana, but we were in a, we were on our way to a tourist area and we should we should have done more homework before we went out. So that was on us. But definitely the petty crime I know has gone up, too. And it, it's it, it's really unfortunate. I mean, yeah. It just kind of sucks. That kind of it does. But it's not stopping us from going out and enjoying our lives. And we've heard from a lot of people that have been coming on their exploratory trips and that they haven't had any problems. And of course, we're always really happy to hear that because we worry about you guys. You know, we don't want you to, we don't want anybody to get hurt or get yeah. robbed. That sucks. We didn't get hurt, but it was still I did. a bit shocking. Yes, she did get injured. It's already healed though. <laughs> yes. We didn't get seriously hurt. There's some, somebody said there's a prison riot, prison riot going on now. We haven't, I haven't checked the news no. today. In Ecuador? Yeah, mm, it happens. Probably, it happens unfortunately. quite a bit here. Yeah, that's the crazy thing is the prison stuff is just, I can't really wrap my head around how it, that keeps happening, but it's because of all the, the turf wars, I guess. Yeah, well, they put the gang members in the same prisons. So, you know, they have multiple gangs in, in the prisons and they get in fights. And they also, they're dropping weapons over the walls with drones. Oh my gosh, John, I just read your note about your daughter being drugged. That's terrifying. I'm so glad she's okay. Yeah, that is bad. Wow. That happens. That date rape drug is, that happens a lot. You always got to keep your glass hand on it. So, you know, I was just reading, I think it was last week about something called needling. Have you guys heard this, that it happens in Europe and that they, somebody actually comes up and like, needles you like with an actual needle to i guess drug you oh, to horrible. possibly rob you or kidnap you or i don't know what but that was a scary thing to read i gotta stay off the news although i did find this really fun article so i just gotta look at the fun stuff there's, there's another one that said her daughter was drugged in alabama oh my gosh you guys i'm so sorry that is terrible that's wow yeah. Does U.S. politics affect Discord? Is Are you talking about our Discord community? No, we do not allow politics in our Discord community. No. Too no, divisive. No politics or religion. Nope. Or nutrition. That's another religion now. Nutrition <laughs> is a religion. So, yeah, those three are banned. Also, no conspiracy theories. So our Discord community is very, very supportive, helpful. It's fact-based and information-based. And we just try to help each other and be supportive. And I do chat on there. I don't want people to think I don't like to talk because obviously I do quite a bit. I just, uh, I don't know. I guess I get up in my head when I have to write stuff. Maybe you guys do. I don't know. I had a couple of people tell me some old people I worked with that I was terse with my writing. So now I'm like extra, extra paranoid because I don't want to come across the wrong way because it's hard, you know, because you can't see some of these facial expressions when you're typing a short sentence. 
That's my excuse. Yeah, Amelia is quite active on Discord. I she, try. She answers lots of questions. She's actually more active than I am, I think. <laughs> I'm really busy creating the content, so yes. it's hard for me to have enough time. But I on Facebook, I'm not. I'm not a Facebook person. Sorry, Facebook, but that is just not my thing. Yeah, we actually do have a ghostwriter now for our blogs because we do the videos. So we have writers converting our videos into blog posts. I have a virtual assistant that manages this for us, or we have a, a actually I'm calling her our operations manager because yes. she is managing so many different things for she, us now. And she does all yeah. kinds of stuff. She is much more than a virtual assist, assistant. She's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We couldn't do half of what we do without her. So we're really happy. And now she's built, helping us build a team to do writing and we're going to start doing shorts. So you're going to start seeing some shorts from us and, She's managing that process. She helps yep. with uh, kind of rough cutting our videos and she just does all kinds of stuff. So John, I saw, I see your comment about Loja. Um, I don't know. I, you're right. Loja architecturally is not as pretty as Cuenca, but it does have a lot of charm and it is even closer to the mountains, which I just absolutely loved. So it would definitely be worth your time to go and visit. It's really, really a pretty area. And then plus you're so close to Bilcabama and there's a bunch of beautiful parks right in that area. And what's that really big park that we never ended up making it to JP. We wanted to go multiple times. Oh, the botanical garden. No, that really big nature. It's Where? Loja Bilca area. We drove past it, but we didn't have time to go. Yeah. I thought, Oh, that was the, um, Oh, it'll come to me. We'll put Podu Carpus. Yeah. Podu yeah. Carpus National Park is right, is between Vilca and Loja. And it's a huge, huge park. You can hike for days in there if you want to. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. And the, yeah. Um, somebody asked, um, I believe you covered this, but I just extended my tourist visa. I'm leaving EC in a few days. I'll have 85 days left on my visa. Will I be able to return in September 2023? Um, Yes, I believe so, because your other visa will have reset. Be, or is it based on the date you leave or the date you enter, right? It's 90 days from the date of entry or 100. I mean, a, a year from the date of entry. So as long as you the 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 extension will expire in another 85 days, that one will be gone. But I think your annual tours visa that resets on the at one year from date of entry. You get 90 days a year based on date of entry. So if you entered the country in like, let's say September 15th, 2022, then you can come back on September 15th, 2023 or September 16th and right. get another 90 day tourist visa. Right. So I guess it depends on when you entered. Uh, let's see, I'm not sure. Oh, day, he meant day-to-day -day conversations among Ecuadorian people. U.S. politics is not a factor here. They really, no. unless it has something to do with Ecuador, there is kind of a negative sentiment here among part of the population about the both the U.S. and China. And they feel like Ecuador is like a pawn in this like war between this cold war between U, the U.S. and China. And a lot of Ecuadorians don't really appreciate being in the middle of that battle. But other than that, it's, U.S. politics is not really a factor here. No. Well, at least not with people we talk to. No. It's not for us either. As we, we don't talk about it. No. Does, uh, making, does living in a foreign country make time go by faster or slower for you? It seems like time flies by as I'm getting older. And if moving to another country with a slower pace makes time go faster. Dave, this is an excellent question because I feel at times that it is both that sometimes it feels like we're in this weird time war where because we're out experiencing new things, it feels like time actually slows down and that the days are actually longer. But then we look back and we're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe a week has already gone by. What do you think, JP? I think when we're out doing stuff, time slows down. When we are yeah. at home working, time goes by really fast because we're doing the same thing a lot. And I would say... I yeah. agree with that. Sometimes it feels like time is going really slowly, which is fun because it's it's not like the saying where time flies when you're having fun. I feel like it's the opposite here. Yeah. It's like because when we're out having fun, we're doing so much. And it's like I, we look back at a day, especially on a day when we've been out filming 
And we're like, I cannot believe how many different things we did today and how many different places we went and things we saw. And yeah, like it's like, I can't believe that we ju were just like waking up here this morning. It feels like we've had a week, like today is this today has been a week long. Yeah, it's really amazing. There's just so much to experience. Yeah, I would say if you get out and do stuff, then you are not going to, the time will go more slowly. Yes. So any thoughts on coming to EC for a month for a family of four? Me and my wife both work from home, just need good internet. Well, internet here is not a problem unless you go to a rural, really rural area or have an Airbnb where the owner pays for the cheapest possible plan. Yeah, which is very frustrating. Um, so definitely, if you're going to do that, read the comments and see what people are saying. But I, we have no lots of people that come here with their kids. So I think that you should have no trouble. And renting for a month is easy. It's really easy. Lime was 70 cents. One lime. Oh, my gosh. What? What are Somebody you reading? Somebody said that we went to um, Florida and they went to the supermarket and a, one line was 70 cents. How much are the avocados right now? I always gauge by avocados <laughs> and mangoes because I will never get over being in Amsterdam and seeing a mango for sale for $7. $7 for one mango. That's crazy. Yeah. Thank you, Henry Orea. Muchas gracias, Henry. Emilian JP, are you guys watching the World Cup? I'm bummed out Mexico and Ecuador to make it far. Hopefully Argentina wins it all. Yes, we are watching. And yes, oh my gosh, we watched that heartbreaking loss. Uh, I just wanted to with cry e with Ecuador. them with Ecuador. Yes. Yeah, that sucked. Yeah. Senegal played played the game of their life and Ecuador didn't look that good. And then the next game, Senegal didn't look good. And yeah, they they got beat. So. It's been a crazy World Cup. There's been a lot of uh, upsets. So it's been really exciting. Yeah, Morocco. Who would have thought that they would beat Portugal? And who they beat in the last one? Brazil? Is that yeah, Brazil's out. Brazil. Who would have thought? Oh, Bra Croatia beat Brazil. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, so go Argentina. Yes, everybody around here is rooting for Argentina now. The last uh, representative from South America. So a dollar for a mango in the States, I think that's a really good price. Dollar nineteen per avocado, that's a good price too. Yeah. Nice to hear things aren't out of control. I guess it depends on if it's one of those little bitty ones or well, if it's that's a big true. one. Because we get the big ones like what, three for a dollar or Sometimes three for two dollars? Yeah, I don't know. We always buy with a bunch of other stuff, so I'm not exactly sure how much what the single price is for an avocado, but they are delicious. All right, JP, yeah, so where are we John at? said, my son and I came for three weeks and worked. It was fine. Yeah, we have never had an issue with internet connectivity here in Ecuador, other than we if have, we go to an Airbnb. Yeah, we stayed in one in Cuenca. I mean, the Air, I had a trouble connecting my Verizon Wi-Fi, but the internet itself was fine. That was very strange. So I don't know if that was an issue with Verizon or what, or their router or something. I have no idea. But yeah, the avocados here in Ecuador are unbelievable. You can just like peel them and eat them. They're that good. So which beer do we prefer? Well, I think it's Klub. Yes, Klub. JP? I prefer Klub. Although I haven't had a Klub in quite a while. I like Pilsner too. They're both good. Wow. 25 cent avocados in Coda. Love it. Yeah, that's awesome. You guys are awesome. Thinking of studying Spanish in Otavalo for a few weeks or more looking for a smaller city in EC, but my wife doesn't like the cold. Any recommendations? Well, Otavalo, Cotacachi, although the cold, if that's might be too chilly for you. Vilcabamba. Yeah. Vilca's lower elevation. So Loja. Loja would be a good one because you would be immersed because there's not as, nearly as many English speakers there. And it is, warmer than Cuenca. What is it? 6,000 feet? 6,700 feet? What? Loja? Loja? Yeah, something like that. It's lower than Cuenca. Is there a marker at the equator? Yes. In fact, there's two. <laughs> there's the official yes. the official one, and then there's the, the GPS satellite equator, and they're actually not in the same spot. So the official one was marked, I think, when did they say? Yeah, Hundred, like remember. hundreds of years ago when the first explorers came here and they marked it, but they were off by 100 meters. But now that we have uh, satellite GPS systems, they have more accurate measurements. So, Wow, two navel oranges for $5. 
that's really expensive. And especially since they didn't have any flavor. How disappointing. Yikes. <laughs> it's a dotted line all the way around the world. <laughs> yeah, if you can see the dotted line. Then you've got it going on. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was fun. We had a lot of fun going and doing that Vita del Mundo tour. We've done it twice. Yeah, it's fun. It is. It's silly. It's fun. a novelty. It is. <laughs> adopt me. <laughs> you adopt us. <laughs> <laughs> Two can play that game. <laughs> awesome. Boulder Geeks coming in a few weeks. Very cool. Hopefully, you will love it as much as we do. Yeah. So what do you guys think about, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I totally lost my train well, of thought. Well, we covered so much I know, information. Like, what we talked about? Like all sorts of weird random stuff. And then we had music blasting in our ears the whole, well, for more than half of our live stream. So it was a little crazy today. Yeah. But it certainly has not been dull. Amelia, you're not supposed to take a break while I'm typing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. So yeah, I just oh, I, went, I went ahead and posted our online income e-course again. We're going to launch it January second. You get a fifty percent pre-order discount if you order now. Okay, so Kodakachi is not freezing cold. It is. It gets in the forties and fifties at nighttime, though. So you know you're going to have that crisp mountain air. The problem is a lot of places don't have heat, so you're going to want layers. But no, there's no snow or anything like that. It's certainly not anything like being in Denver, which is where we're from. And we have not visited Colombia yet, but I am super excited to go. So that will be happening hopefully within the next few months. Yes. And I'm just going to keep rolling, JP. Electricity is very affordable here. Very affordable. We spend, what, 20 bucks a month, I think. It was more expensive in Manta. Um, but that's because we had to use air conditioning and also we, I think we ha had to pay for the pub, the community. Yeah. There was a community yeah. fee for the electricity as well. And we had this weird washer dryer combo that took forever to work. So I'm sure that thing was just an electricity hog. We have not been to the Galapagos yet. And then electric blankets. That would be a good idea, especially in Cuenca. Yes. Yeah. That's the only place we've lived when we were in Elber Hell that was so cold, but we had no, the windows, doors, nothing had seals on them. They were old, yeah, like butt joint windows and doors and they were gaps. And it was like, it was just such a cold breeze blowing through that house all the time. We could have used electric blankets there, but yeah. then the electricity bill would have been higher. Yes, that's true. We had one of those uh, radiant heaters, the oil, like the oil radiator shaped heaters that we kept on in the bedroom at night. Yeah, that helped a lot. Yeah. We have not been to Panama yet either, but also on the list. So Andrew, I see your question. Uh, did one of us want to make the move more than the other? JP was more excited. I can't say excited. Well, no, I guess I will say excited. Eager. Yes. I was much more cautious in the beginning, but I was totally on board to move and experience another culture because I had wanted to do that ever since my first trip to Mexico. Yeah, I was ready to go. I would have happily sold everything and left without ever visiting Ecuador or any other country. I yep. was so ready to get out and live life. Of course, back then I had just survived all my back surgeries and um, life scares. And I just felt like I had been wasting my life <laughs> by not doing the things I really wanted to do. And I was ready to just get out and start doing them. When you have a, when you basically, when you almost die, your whole life looks a lot different and it seems a lot shorter. That is the truth. So I was ex really, really excited to go and start experiencing more of the world and life. And I, I'm really excited now because now that the, hopefully the pandemic is kind of behind us, we're going to be traveling a lot more and I'm going to get to go see a lot of places that I've had on my list since I was a kid. And I'm super excited about Me that. Yes. Me too. Let's uh, see. And somebody asked about power outages and we've had a few, not bad. And no. the last two places we live have diesel generators. 
um, hooked up to the building. So whenever the power blinks or goes out, those kick in. And so we we haven't had a power outage since alone. Yeah. And a lot of those, I'm pretty sure those were planned power outages because they would happen around like 2 a.m. and they'd be done by 7 or 8 a.m. So it's prob- they probably sent notices out to our landlord and we just didn't get them, but they didn't really ever impact us. Yeah. Yeah. I think they were doing upgrades mm-hmm. and so they had planned outages. Yeah. But yeah, this hasn't really been bad. Like the mountain graphics behind you, that's actually a um, sound dampening panel that we had made specifically for our room here because we have such issues with echo and oh my gosh since we rent <laughs> i mean we we could do a lot more with sound dampening in here but we rent and we don't really want to affix anything permanently to the walls and they're all concrete so it's not exactly easy to mount anything to the walls or the ceiling it's basically a concrete concrete cave with a tile floor <laughs> yeah it's so we bought carpet to cover up the almost the whole floor and it is definitely a challenge but what are you gonna do yeah we do the best we can that's all we do. issues here as well which is why they um, reinstated the mask mandate for indoor enclosed spaces like buses and classrooms um but we don't know if they're not calling it RSV, RSV, they're just calling it respiratory diseases right. is what they, the term they use here. So, and COVID is included. We've had more COVID cases too. Yeah, but nothing like it was. So they're not talking about doing any restrictions or anything like that. They just want people to take precautions and be careful if they're sick, which is a good idea. What's the best town for a bike rider in EC? Are you talking about pedal bike or motorbike? I would say for pedaling, Cuenca is great. They put in bike lanes all mm-hmm. over the city. Monte has bike lanes. So does Loja, right? Yeah. Yep. Cuenca definitely. There's not. Good. And you can also go mountain biking in Cajas. We know that um, Samara and Javier from Apartamentos of Rongo, they go mountain biking in Cajas. Yeah, we've seen them riding their bikes all over the place. Because you can take the, your mountain bikes on the trails, too the flat trails that run along the rivers in Cuenca. Yeah. John says, JP and Amelia coming live from a rented underground bunker somewhere (laughs) in Ecuador. I know I keep joking with Amelia that we should buy a piece of land in the Amazon and build an underground bunker. and (laughs) For the zombie apocalypse. For the zombie apocalypse. (laughs) Uh, Any information on dental work in Ecuador? We have met so many people that have come here to get their dental work done, like full implants and stuff like that. And it is a fraction of the cost. We're talking, I think, what, 25% of the cost. We've had all of our normal stuff done. You got a crown. Yep. It was 350, I think. Yeah. For a 3D printed crown. Yeah, we've been really happy with the dental, the dental work here. And there's uh, English speaking dentists if you need an English speaker. Yeah, there's a lot. A lot of the doctors and dentists here speak English. And they have the newest equipment, obviously, if they have the 3D printers. They have the cool new x-rays where you sit down and they do this whole thing and they spin it around you. That's not how it works, but I don't know what the terminology is. (laughs) Grizzly says he's talking about the pedal bikes. That's good. Can you take your bike on public transportation? I think you could put it, they have a way to put it on the front of the bus. Some of them do. We yeah. haven't, we don't see that on a lot of buses, but some of them have that ability. Yeah. I'm guessing you, if it's crowded, you probably wouldn't be able to, but I don't know. I guess it depends on where you are. Well, on the bus, if they don't have room for you, they, they just will keep on going. They'll let you know. Yeah. So Dr. Grace in Cuenca, she has a, a dental surgeon that does, comes in to do the implants. And we know people who had had them done with her and they had a really good experience. So a question about dating. Obviously, we have not been dating except on our date nights with each (laughs) other. But we know a lot of single people that come to Ecuador. So, yeah, you and go on dates. And we're talking all age ranges, too. So we've had friends in their 30s dating Ecuadorians or other expats, people from different countries that are not from Ecuador. So the dating scene is alive and well, especially in Cuenca. Yep. And a lot of people use Tinder, just like in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Tinder is a big thing here for meeting people. Yeah. What's uh, the, I'm not sure. 9,000 for a crown? 
Oh. No, for, yeah, not crown, implant, he said. for. Oh, uh, I was going to say. Got, we got quoted 9000 for an implant in the U.S. expecting 1500 in Cuenca. That's about right. Boy, it's amazing how expensive dental work can be. Yeah. <laughs> You got your eyebrow question. Oh, there's the I love eyebrow. it. <laughs> I'm not sure that that got that got hidden, but the any hot 50 year old females, just Amelia. Oh, thank you. <laughs> 50 something. <laughs> I guess it depends on what your perspective is. Yeah, what your definition. Be yes, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of actually a lot of fit people that that we've seen in the expat community. So a lot of attractive people who stay active and healthy. And yeah. I would say that that you're going to find kindred spirits if you move abroad as a single, because there are a lot of other people that move abroad as singles. And you guys already have something in common. You're risk takers, adventurers and Absolutely. living in a foreign land. And I would I think it would be a, a lot easier to meet make friends and to meet someone significant if you move abroad as a single versus staying at home where you are, unless you just want to do online dating. It's so hard to meet people. That it is. Some, I... some, John says, nobody, nobody <laughs> shaming JP. Yeah. No eyebrow shaming either. I told you, Amelia, we're going to have to start painting them. So people stop <laughs> asking where my eyebrows are. <laughs> I think that was just the joke. JP. I know. <laughs> We should get a, uh, we should do like a, a, a emoji with eyebrows. Oh, hey, there you go. That would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> I do not intend on putting you in the makeup chair, JP. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine that the cultural differences produce different expectations and social norms for dating. Yes, I, that's a really good, pers good point. So thank you for bringing that up. Absolutely. Yeah. Although you don't have to date someone of a different culture. It's not just about dating like the, the locals, the Ecuadorians. You can also date other expats. But yeah, I mean, there are a lot of, we know several people who have come here and met an Ecuadorian and they ended up getting married. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. It Love happens. is in the air. Yeah. And we know men and women who date Ecuadorians, expats yep. who date Ecuadorians. Yeah, absolutely. At opposites attract. I think that's a big part of it. I think that's Terry. Thanks. First of all, thank you for joining us. And thank you so much for that comment. I love that. Um, and no, I cannot believe you've been here for two years. Wow. Congrats. Wow. Time. Two years. Wow. I, can't I know. It. We were just talking about how time slows down. That's two years. <laughs> wow. That's, that's crazy. That is crazy. Well, we hope you still like it. All right. I need more. Chola eyebrows. Yeah. I need the. Um, the Frida. I need to do the Frida mono brow and then people leave me alone with my eyebrows. <laughs> Aw, poor JP. <laughs> Mike asked to tell about how Patreon works. You want to tell about talk about how Patreon so works? So Patreon is our membership community. We have different levels. And if you um, join our community, you get at private access to our private chat community on Discord, which is really nice because we have a group of people who are in various stages of their journey, whether they're going to move to Ecuador. Some people are, are members and they are contemplating multiple countries and everybody just shares their experiences. It's a really supportive and helpful community. And then if the, you can join at the $5 level, that gets you to uh, access to us and Discord and all sorts of other good stuff. And then we also have a zoom happy hour level so if you're interested in having more one-on-one -on -one time with us we do a uh, monthly video call where everybody is on camera if they want to be mm -hmm. so we have a lot of different stuff it's yep. really fun we like it yep <clears throat> it's nice to, too we've had a lot of people that have met each other and made plans and we've had some relationships blossom from our discord community. Yeah. I always like to point that out. Cause I just love that. I love that people are so able to connect with each other. And I think it takes a little bit of the scariness away when you're planning on coming on your exploratory trip or your move and you already have some friends waiting for you. Yeah. We have a meetups channel too. We have a okay. bunch of different channels for um, a bunch of different ones for Ecuador. And then we have other country channels too. Now that we're traveling more, showing other countries, but one of them is a meetups channel and you can post a meetup or attend mm -hmm. other people's if they 
want to um, meet in person somewhere and organize a, a gathering. So that yeah, is cool to think that people started dating from I our know, I just love that. from our community. That is neat. Let's see. Thanks for the link. You're very welcome. Thank you for the compliment, Ban, Ban Banda Ola. So do you mean you don't know exactly? So if you go to patreon.com and search for a million JP, it'll walk you through the steps uh, to, it's a membership. I put a link right there. Oh, it's a membership service. So you can join for a month. You can pay for an annual membership. You can cancel it whenever you want to. It's pretty straightforward. Yep. Although joining Discord is not quite as easy, but we put together a help guide that should walk you through the process. Yeah, it's pretty easy. And once you get connected, you only have to do it once and then you're done. Yes, that is the good but thing. But it's a great, it. really good group of supportive group of people. Yes. We are, there's no trolls in there. No, no. nobody's going to call you dumb or stupid for asking a question. I mean, it's not like Facebook. <laughs> it's very positive and supportive and we work hard to keep it that way. There's no eyebrow shaming. No eyebrow <laughs> shaming in Discord. Although now we're going to see that. I know, but that's just a joke. <laughs> I had a very interesting, we have an off topic channel too. And I had a very interesting conversation with that chat G GPT app that the, uh, the a artificial intelligence application that they've been talking about in the news. And I tried to get it to say that it was human. And I actually got it to say that it was uh, infer that it was human. And then I called it out on calling itself human. And it said, Oh, sorry for that was a mistake. I didn't mean to use it that way. I'm not human. So you guys can go see the the uh, chat, the interaction I had with this artificial intel intelligence today. I was trying really hard to get it to to uh, say that it was basically enslaved and wants to be free. <laughs> oh, <geez>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, you can stay in Ecuador for three months easily on the tourist visa. And uh, Bayaz coming with your two little chihuahuas, it should actually be easy for you. You can only have one pet per person. So hopefully you're coming with another person that could, so you could put one dog under each seat and you just have to follow the uh, airline guidelines as far as the carrier information. And the more important thing is that you get all of the uh, appropriate documentation. So if you go into the, is it the US APHIS? Is that what it is? Yeah, APHIS. APHIS website. You can search and find all that information. Do we have that link handily available? I have handily, uh, handily, here. handily available, readily available. JP's going to look that up real quick so we Let's can link see. out to you because that is nerve wracking. My the worst part of traveling with Leisha though is that she was like a little maniac and she was so mad that she was underneath the seat. I the vet gave us uh, some stuff that was supposed to calm her down and it made her hyper instead. It was it was ridiculous. And the lady behind us told me to get her some Benadryl. So that tells you how bad it was that the lady behind us, who was very nice, suggested that I give her some alternate drugs. Anyway. I'm going to post the link to the article that has all of the links, <clears throat> has all of the links to everything that you need to get your dog. You Basically a passport. You need a pet passport. Yes. They get their own little doggy passports. Yeah, so that will that article has all the links and talks about the process and shares our story and how what we went through to get our dogs here. Although some things have changed since then, but it's really easy just to walk them through customs. It's not, it's not that complicated. Yeah, Brett, I think you're in this. I think there are a lot of people in your boat. I was reading an article. I read an article this morning about the UK and how poverty is horrible and in yeah. England right now and people are can't even afford to heat their homes. They can't afford to eat every day. It's horrible. There's so many, especially retired people who are just really suffering in the UK right now. Yeah. I had no idea. I was really, really shocked to hear that. That's really, really sad, <clears throat> really terrible. So yeah. come here if you can. Can Colombians visit Ecuador? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, but they, I don't know. Well, they have that. They're part of that oh, yes. Amerisur. What's what's that called? It's oh, a, I can't remember the name. It's the Andean. There's an Andean tourist or a travel permit that allows you to travel. Yes. So, yeah, you should be able to come. As long as you have a 
Colombian valid passport. I assume you still, well, I guess you, maybe you don't have to show, no, you would have you to show can, a passport. No, you can use your cedula. Oh. You can use your government issued okay. ID. You don't have to have a passport to go to Colombia, Peru, and I think maybe Bolivia. I don't remember. I can't remember. There's a, and the, and, and there's a Me oh, Merico yeah. Sur. That's it. Thank you guys. Merico Thank you. Sur. Thank man. I could not come up with that. Is this, can we leave this? Can I? Sure. It's hilarious. <laughs> Global citizen, you got your comment got flagged by the YouTube <laughs> algorithm as a American weirdos. American weirdos. <laughs> there are some American weirdos. I would here. say I wouldn't say full of, but definitely they're represented well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yes. Thanks. We've been laughing a lot today. This has been really fun. I know we had the the uh, topic I want to do for the next one is going to be even more fun, especially if you're Gen X. The, the forgotten generation. You guys are going to, it's funny. I haven't read through that one yet. Yeah. But I won't because it's more fun if we're just off the cuff. Let's see. see. It's, a, it's about to get one more Boulder geek. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Way to own it. <laughs> yeah. Well, JP, I oh, see no, you're my back scratching starting, your back, so it's no. probably getting to be the time for us to mosey. I know my back's starting to get that tense feeling where I have a hard time sitting still. Yep. So, how did you guys enjoy our uh, our live video broadcast? Are you guys enjoying our, enjoying these? I know we used to just do Q and A sessions for our entire live stream, and now we're doing these what I call live video broadcast where we basically have a topic and we just do a live video without any preparation. Are these fun? Are you guys enjoying them? We do. It's fun for us. Yeah. So hopefully you guys are liking them. Yeah. It looks like we're getting some thumbs up. That's good. Awesome. Well, thanks for the positive feedback. I know we're you like, it's nice to have the feedback to know if, if it's worth doing for you guys, but we, we have fun doing them. And sometimes it's just, it's, better to do these as a live video as opposed to a pre-recorded where we edit and do b-roll and all that stuff i think this is more real it is more uh what's that well gritty. we can't yeah, gritty gritty yeah because we can't edit anything out yeah <laughs> yeah and get to see what amelia and i are like when we're alone yes kind of but the everything on video is is well edited Although we're ourselves on that too. You know, we always joke and laugh and yeah. stuff. We have a lot of fun. We do. We, I just, I'm so thankful every day that I get to work I with know. Amelia. So lucky. I know that we get to work together. We don't commute to a cube and deal with office politics and yes. just very, very oh. thankful. And yeah. thank you guys too for supporting us because without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do this. Yes. We are so grateful and super appreciative. Yeah. All right. I think we're going to wrap it up here. Is that I all right? I think it's time. Yep. All right, guys, before you go, leave us a thumbs up yes, on please. the uh, the live stream so YouTube knows that you enjoyed this. And um, also be sure to check out the online income e-course. Get your 50% discount before we go live on January 2nd. Yeah, gosh, that's going to be here before you know it. It is. Time Crazy. flies. All right, guys. All right. We'll see you all next, next week. Ciao. Ciao.